and welcome to another episode of the Treehouse Classroom. In today's episode, we would like to take you to our local saltwater creek. I shall call it Baby Island the Second. One of our all-time favorite family adventures is to go night fishing, in particular flounder gigging. We are still under the COVID-19 quarantine, but our boat ramps have opened up. Along with flounder, we might catch a few blue crabs. Regardless of what we catch or don't catch, we always have a great time out here. In our three main goals of finding truth, beauty, and goodness in each day, we find beauty by the bucket loads out here. Just look at that sunset. If you watched our gardening episode, one of the main things we were trying to teach our boys was the lesson of working hard for the fruits of your labors. We have that same thing going on out here. It takes a lot of work to get the boat out on the water. Tonight we've got lights attached and we're hoping to catch some flounder when it gets dark. Over the years, Victor's taught the boys to read the water. See ripples like this and know that that's a school of minnows. halfway there we needed to go down a little bit more so that we can see through the water and uh, hopefully watch out for those those flounder laying on the bottom of the creek. Are you ready to gig some flounder? The boys have been asking to go gigging and we yep. haven't been able to get out because all the boat landings have been closed and they were open today at uh, 12 noon so we were very excited to finally be able to get out on our little skiff. This is a sort of like a flat boat because uh, the creeks here are kind of shallow. So uh, low boat, flat, it's perfect boat for these creeks to get around. And, and this uh, stuff is close. We've been doing this for the last 10 years now. The boys have grown up doing this. A little bit later, once the sun goes down and the tide goes down a little uh. bit more, we're gonna show you. Hopefully we'll get to see some flounder. Uh, some nights we get out here and we don't see anything. Other times, there's a lot of fish, uh, but it's always fun to see, you know, uh, marine life walking around uh, the bottom of the island. And just to see the landscape, uh, just to get out and be able to do something different. So we really enjoy it. Then we also, uh, in the process, we're teaching the boys responsibility. In this particular creek, you're only allowed to keep, keep uh, around 10 fish, and you cannot use generators. You have to use a 12 volt uh, battery. We uh, review the DNR catalog constantly just to make sure that we're up to date. Uh, last year or the previous year, I think flounder were, uh, 14 inch flounder was a keeper. This year has gone up to 15 inches. So it makes it a little harder to be able to 
uh, get a perfect fish. And the way that we can tell if a fish is big enough is by how far the eyes are apart. If we think that it's not big enough, we let it go. Hey, tell me about the, uh, the flounder. The flounder, really tasty. But, how you, but how do you know it's a flounder when you see it in the water? Because they're super flat, they're really flat. They have like these kind of tannish spots. And the, both eyes are on one side. And I'm really looking forward to eating a garfish. <laughs> my dad's gonna try one. He never has. This is my brother Lucas, and I'm Alexander. Hi. My mom, my mom Allison, is holding the phone, and the one who was talking a lot about the fish was my dad, <laughs> Victor. Lucas, what are you looking for tonight? Crabs. Crabs. So Victor was talking a little bit about the ecology and fishing conservation, and that's one of the really important lessons that we have learned out here and that the boys are learning, especially this year in science as they were learning about the aquatic biomes and um, the saltwater being our closest aquatic biome here, that they learn how to preserve what we have so that their children and their grandchildren can keep enjoying what we're doing out here today. I already hooked up one of the cables here and I'm about to turn the lights on just so that you can see. That's what it looks like right there. And so and then we're going to adjust the lights. Everything yeah. I know about fishing, you, uh, well not everything, but a lot of it, especially when it comes to flounder gigging, I learned through YouTube and also by getting out here during the day on uh, low tide to uh, scout the creeks to make sure that I don't get we don't get stuck at night. That's one of our biggest things is safety. Uh, we got our life jackets. The guys have their uh, whistles attached to their life jackets, and they know what to do in case they fall off the boat. So right now they're just guiding the boat along the edge here. We've got one in the front and one in the back and the lights are shining right through the water so we can see if we could catch. water's a little bit murky and right now it is murky it's too windy wind it's also if there's been a storm recently it turns up the water Oyster really not too far look you pull it back in good job Yeesh. Hey, get your dirty clothes out of my neck. Catch Lucas. I caught a crab. Let me see. He caught it all by himself. Sweet. He's going to give the crab a kiss. <laughs> okay, no, that's not necessary. Xander, is this a boy or a girl? That's a boy. Yep. Because, like, you can tell from that little um, pointy thing, uh -huh. girl just has, like, these ribs. Yep. One of my favorite things about fishing is that we often have a lot of time to just think. There's a lot of quiet and waiting while you're fishing, even gigging. And here, as the guys were just pushing the boat along, I started thinking about something that I had read just a couple days after Easter. It was when Jesus had come back to meet his friends after the resurrection, and he met them while they were fishing. And he too had been fishing because he was cooking fish out on the beach. And it made me think that during this time of insane in uncertainty that uh, we have that same Jesus with us. <laughs> and you can bet his friends were scared. They were uncertain. They didn't know what was happening during the cru crucifixion and those days of him being in the tomb. But when he came back, it was all changed. And we can have that same hope too during this COVID-19 crisis. We can know that the same Jesus that came back to life is the same Jesus that walked on water and is the same Jesus that can help us through this crisis. So as you're watching this video thinking about fishing, I hope you'll stop and think about the great fisherman too. And I hope he brings peace and hope to your life. Victor found a flounder. Check it out. He's right there. You can barely see him. My word, I do not see anything. So he's right here. Okay. Just touch see it, touch right it. there? I see it, I see it. 
You can only see the. Uh... Wait, wait. Oh, I see. Yeah. Wait, 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 wait. I can't see. I can't see. He's just gonna touch him so that he moves. I see him. There he goes. <laughs> Tiny little Talk flower. about camouflage, right? Over. Masters. Can I touch him? Alright, here, I'll give you the spear. Okay. Wait, you want a spear? No, he's just gonna touch him. Okay. Can I stab him? It's too small, but uh, you can touch there too. Because don't miss them. It's okay. I'm sorry. Yeah. There'll be more. Right here. He's gonna go backwards, right? Daddy found There's a little, a little snake right here. Let me see. There it goes, there it goes. There's an eel actually. An eel? Where is it? Did you get it? I had an eel. Oh, no. oh. Oh, Wait, show him, show him. Did you? I caught the flounder. I caught one. Oh! Oh, no, <laughs> We caught one garfish, about four crabs, and three flounders. The garfish is all mine to eat, by the way. Thanks for watching this week's episode of the Treehouse Classroom. We hope we've inspired you to find some truth, beauty, and goodness in your environment, whether you're near the water, you're the mountains, near desert. We hope you can find something to find beauty in and find some quality family time.